Your jokes are pretty candid that it wasn't maybe exactly the way the work was structured. It, but It's like a coach that calls a play and everybody's supposed to do this and that. And now that's not what we called. Um, Corey was worried about Brian's horse getting a little keen in front of him. And um, he was afraid they were going to go too fast. And we just wanted a 12s workout. And I think it, I think it played out that way. But um, they were supposed to go 12s kind of side by side. And um, I told them they didn't have to like, like in, totally engage, but I wanted them to go like 48 and a couple. And I think they ended up going that. I'm, I'm not sure if they clocked them independently, but no, that wasn't the play I called. <laughs> How often does that happen? I mean, it, it seems like things can obviously. It happens. Yeah. Yeah, it does happen. I mean, and Brian, Brian's horse is doing ex exceptionally well too, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Corey was worried he was going. They were going to go too fast, because I was adamant that I did, want, did not want them going too fast. You know, they didn't need. To, they didn't need to go down there at forty six or something yeah. like that. What about Rattle and Roll? He worked too, and he obviously did wear the the Derby saddle towel. He's whatever four spots away. What What are your intentions with him? I'm not intending on running. Yeah. No. I, I mean, he's he's deep in the in the list. Um, you know, Mike Mackin and I have talked about it, and and Mike said he'd like to keep keep him on the possibles. Mm -hmm. Horse is doing fine. Yeah. Um, but but he's unlikely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would he run in the Pat De Mile then? No. 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 I don't think I even nominated him. Would he point towards the Preakness? Probably, but I, but I'd really like to get this horse back into winning ways. I mean, he's running two million dollar races in a row between the Louisiana Derby and the Bluegrass, and and um, you know I'd like to get him in a whether it's a you know, grade three or, you know, a nice listed two turn race somewhere and uh, get him back to winning and, and uh, you know, maybe start from there. But it's, it's still a long season, so. Corey was I'm sorry. very high on how he said Smile Happy's doing. He really, uh, he said he was disappointed in the bluegrass. Yeah. Uh, but he just thinks the horse is, has taken a step forward. Well, thir third race off the layoff, and and I do think we've got it spot on right now. Fingers crossed. But he he um, he is doing really well. He got a little tired in the bluegrass. I think he needed that race, um, especially the fact that we laid him a little closer than than uh, than the eventual winner. And I think I think Flavian Pratt timed the ride really well on Zandon, and I think Zandon ran a huge race. So. Um, you know, we've got to make up a couple links there, and we got to make a couple links up on Epicenter as well. But you know, uh, th those horses. Um, well, Zandon has less races under his belt than Epicenter, but Epicenter we may have seen the best of, and you know, we're going to maybe haven't seen the best of us yet. What about Tis the Mom, Kenny? Uh, obviously, the, the, he's a great wild card in this race. I um, mean, his form stacks up. You know, obviously he beats Tony Court and the, the uh, Jeff Ruby, but. You know, he's got the dirt win at Ellis, but underachieved in the race in the Holy Bull. What, what's your expectations about the dirt with him? Well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see where he draws. And I'm not sure it matters inside or outside, but we're going to allow him to run early and maybe keep keep a little uh, adversity out of his way. I mean, mm -hmm. he's got enough speed to, to go out. He broke his maiden in 23, 47. He's got that kind of speed if you need it. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him run early. And uh, you know this horse is this horse got a serious chance too. I mean he's mm -hmm. he's leading earner in the race. I think he's made a million over a million dollars, and he's really only got one bad race on his page. Yeah. And uh, people are tossing him. Might be a mistake. You know who loves him is Mike Battaglia. I don't know if he's talked to you about. Yeah, that. He's good friends with Jeff Ruby, <laughs> <laughs> and he also won his dad's race. Yeah, exactly. So he's exactly. A, he's winning. Winner of his dad's race to win the Derby. Yeah. But, Tag, but Taglia doesn't have a clear mind on all that. I love Mike, though. I'm glad he's pulling for us. Talk to me about your, your two jocks, uh, uh, Brian and, and Corey. And obviously, they're two guys you ride quite a bit. And, and uh, give me your, your impressions of those two guys. Well, I liken this to a home game for us because, because Brian, between Brian and Corey, I mean, I, I think they're both in the top 10 all time here. I mean, Jenny probably know before me, but. These guys have been around this oval all their life, and mm -hmm. they're both two solid, solid journeyman rider. I mean, I don't know how many riding titles oh, Corey's got here at Churchill, but he's here now. 19. He can tell you. 19. Yeah, so, um, yeah. So, so I don't have much concern about them knowing their way around there. And, um, you know, I think both both um, Brian and Corey are, are due a signature horse, and maybe one of them's got it this coming week. Are you due a signature horse? I've, had, got some plenty. I've had some signature <laughs> horses, but, you know, like, 
Um, you know, the der the Derby's elusive. You, you've yeah. got to have a lot go right. And yeah. Actually, I feel really relaxed. I don't feel any pressure. I feel like um, we're enjoying it, and um, that's really the way it should be. I've had years we didn't, and I've had years it was it was a little more higher pressure, but I don't feel any right now. Speaking of home games, having the Mackins, and, and, and it's going to be a big crowd around them whenever yeah. they're, they're there. What is that like for you? And I know you do, you've done a lot of business. You have a lot of owners, but to have someone like those guys. It's fantastic. You know, they're wonderful people, and, and they're, they're absorbing every every you know bit of the moment. And, you know, they focus in on, hey, it's the journey. And I think they realize that, that you know, it's not, not a given. But, um, boy, it'd be, it'd be an unbelievable thing to pull it off for, for them here locally. And um, that, in a way, I kind of feel like they got a lot of good mojo going. And, um, you know, the, their mother and father have both passed away. I believe in angels, you know, and they've got their mom and dad up there. And here we got Lucky Seven and all the five kids are, you know, actively enjoying this. And it's a neat deal. One thing about Corey Lannery is if it's a tight hole, he almost out Burrell Burrell when he got second on Lipkin and Lee in the Derby. I mean, he's yeah. not afraid to go through a hole that doesn't exist. I'm a big fan of the Cajun riders. You know, they, a lot of them do that. They, they're they very, very savvy, and, and um, I feel real confident about both guys being out there. What about the filly? How is she coming into the race? You know, you know um, she's doing great. Um, she put in a really good work. We worked her second set after the break today, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, she's going to have to have some things set up for her, and she's going to have to run the race of her life, and it is a good group. Uh, my expectations are modest, but, you know, she's ready.